Hey, everybody. Warning. Hi. Hi. This contains Age of Ultron spoilers. <gasps> so, what'd you think about the, how Ultron won and then killed everyone? It was pretty crazy. I thought of all the characters who may join Ultron's cause, Captain America would not have been my first choice. But he, uh, especially after he broke uh, Haley Atwell's neck to do it. Not, uh, not what's her name? You know, not Agent Carter. Actually, Haley Atwell, the actress, that broke was, her neck. That, that that was bearing. But you know, he then convinced him with that like that screen of cat videos. Yeah. So that was bold because they established early on in the movie that Captain America loves cat videos. And who doesn't? Exactly. But he spends probably six or seven points in the movie talking about cat videos. So if you love Captain America talking about cat-related uh, videos on, on YouTube, uh, this was the perfect movie for you. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. But on a serious note, um, this was a pretty good movie. Yeah. Uh, we, we, we've we gotten into a lot of what we thought did and didn't work. Uh, there was something I, I was deliberately holding back on, and that was, I think, one of my biggest problems with Age of Ultron is that the tone of the trailers was very much Ultron is going to come in and he's going to kick your shit in and you are going to like it. You know, it was uh, always yeah. very menacing. You know, I will tear them apart from the inside. Hope, I think I'll take that from them first. And Ultron, when you get into it, he's not like a pushover, but he's not threatening per se. Because I feel like yeah. the, the Avengers don't face him head on very often. And when they do, they seem to always at least face, e they, you know, they break even with him. He... He needed to be more like he was in Earth's Mightiest Heroes. Mm -hmm. He needed to come out and just whoop them in a fight once. Because I, especially have... even if it's in a fight where he has Scarlet Witch and Quicksilver fighting with him, and that's the reason why he gets the advantage, that'd have been fine. But even in that fight, when it happens, the heroes get the better of them by the end of that fight. Yeah, um, I have to I have to ask you when you were watching this movie and you're seeing Ultron doing Ultron things, you're like, why can't he be like he was in the cartoon? Yeah, I mean, the, the cartoon set Ultron up so well on the sense of, like, oh, man, this is just he's ruthless. menace. He's ruthless, he's menacing, and you just can't seem to get away from him. And there's a, there's a, it's not a plot hole, but there's a part of the story that does not make sense to me. Because we're in a different time and age from when Ultron was first created. You know, we're, we're at a point now where the internet is so pervasive. I do not understand how Ultron has uploaded himself into the internet. Yet at the end of the movie, they have effectively said, like, we've killed Ultron because we killed all the robots. I'm like, how is there not a backup copy of Ultron on some fucking GeoCities webpage somewhere out there that he just stored himself on to revive himself? And maybe that's an option they're keeping open to revive him. Yeah. But I was just like, even at the time, I was just like, I don't feel like this is ever going to end. Like, how do you stop a villain who has like, input themselves into the Internet? Yeah, he's like, he is in the internet. They specifically even say he uses the internet to move around, and that's a problem that I kind of have as a plot hole is the fact that why didn't he just upload himself someplace? Yeah, why, why is he, like, why is he walking around to get to places? Like, I understand he has a platform he needs to, you know, upload his AI to, to, to function on, but it's still a lot of time where it just feels like, why isn't there, like, a backup program being run to send Ultron drones all over the planet. So whenever he needs to be somewhere, he just zaps his consciousness into that one specifically and goes from there. Like, it was a lot of like, hey, Ultron's kind of like hanging around, figuring things. Like, hey, he's, guys. He's, he's imprisoning Black Widow in a cage for some reason. Because the actress was pregnant. Yeah, they like, oh, man, you, I've captured you, Black Widow, so I'm going to throw you in this abandoned radio shack and you better not call anybody for help. All right, peace. Like, why didn't you kill her or anything? I, I do, I do like his reason for capturing her in the end. Well, it was it was sort of like I'm lonely, and I like was, that. It, it was it was a cool aspect to him, and, uh, and we're gonna poop on Ultron a bit because there are plot holes that come from it. But Ultron himself was well told, I think. Maybe not perfectly told. I feel they could have maybe developed him a little bit more. But there was reasonable arguments to him. He wasn't like a you know, he wasn't like a Ronin or something like that where you're just like, I will bathe Starways in my blood. Like why? I... You know, he has this reason like, look, humans have to be destroyed. They're what's screwing up the planet. Very Ultron of him, you yeah. could say. Um and he has these cool moments where you see him as like this lonely person. And his wacky moments are because he's birthed off of, you know, two very big eccentric personalities with him and Jarvis, you know. It it makes sense in those points. Yeah. 
Um, and those are some of the best points of, of Ultron the movie. You know, he gets his cool moments where he, you know, he rips through himself. He's like, whatever doesn't kill me makes me stronger. And a new cooler version of Ultron shows up. But he also has these moments where you're like, there's a human here behind this. Like he, he picks up Black Widow or not Black Widow, uh, Scarlet Witch and Quicksilver solely because he sees a kindred ship in them. Like yeah. when they betray him, he's actually hurt. Not because he's like, oh, you betrayed my villainous plan. He's just like, dude, what are you? No, we're going to be BFFs. Together. What the fuck? We were going to do it, the three of us. We were the three musketeers. It was when they started fighting him in the first place, and he's like, no, please. Yeah. I was just like, yeah. Also, it really helps. Spader acted the shit out of that. He is fantastic, and the CGI team really just carries it so well in that movie. Now, I have to ask you a very specific nerdy question. Okay. Did you prefer the finger cannons, or would you have liked the mouth cannon? I like the finger cannons. I think the mouth cannon works in certain media, but after seeing Killian breathe fire in Iron Man 3 and, like, wanting to bury my face in the sand, I feel like maybe mouth cannons aren't the way to go. In, in I think movies. that they could have built up to it, and it would have been the last thing that he did was the mouth cannon. I would have liked to have seen it once, but, you know. Also, mm. he wasn't an angry bunny. He was too human. He wasn't, yeah. There there was a little bit too much humanity to him, which I think is, is part I of I mean, it. the design. Oh, yeah. Well, that that too. He also doesn't really get to, like, it's it's not very Frieza of him. Like, it's not like, oh, you've beaten this form. I'll come back with something stronger. He's like, oh, I'm done with this one. I'll just be in this thing for a while until my vibranium body comes around. Hooray! Yeah, I'll just hang out with I'll get bigger shoulders. <laughs> yeah, and um, I there's a lot of things that I wasn't too happy about, but I got to say something. Because I gotta throw this in your face. I fucking called Loki's staff how long ago? You did. Uh, I've been one of those people who have been staunchly in the camp of it's not an Infinity Gem. They couldn't possibly have... Thanos wouldn't have been so stupid to give an Infinity Gem to retrieve another Infinity Gem. That would make him a big dummy dunk, considering he doesn't have any other gems, presumably. Uh, And then that is exactly what happened. It turned out uh, that not only... Is it Infinity Stone, the Mind Stone? It is now also the stone that powers Ultron. Or not Ultron, Vision. Yeah, um, I still stand in the camp that he did that because the Tesseract was such a big one to get. I've also heard the notion of him kind of doing it because he isn't adverse to the idea of losing it because he's like, look, if they're all in the same place, whatevs. It just makes things easier for me when if I do have to finally get shit going, which is... We saw at the end of this movie with an awesome mid credit scene. And I have to say, uh, like, in Thanos' defense, what would you rather have, space or mind? Yeah, I mean, seriously. He doesn't need to mind control people. He just forces them to do his shit. He's like, I'll just rip your face off if you don't do this. Exactly, but the space gem is incredibly important for him to have. Yeah, which... I hope there's just a passing line to that at some point during Infinity War. Just something where he's like, I didn't care about losing mind. I don't need to control minds. But the ability to move through space uninhibited, that is power. That, that is that is very powerful because like once he gets the space gem, he could do whatever the fuck he wants. He can go everywhere. He can just get to wherever he needs to. And there's there's two things that I'm thinking of structurally speaking, and I know that we were talking about spoilers, but this is this is spoilers for the whole thing as a whole. That if Infinity War Part 1 is going to end with Thanos having all of the gems. It should. Infinity War, hopefully, it's tough because I thought that, you know, that's the tone I thought they were going with with Avengers Age of Ultron. They were going to be like, look, shit's going to get real for these guys. And shit sort of got real for them, but not in the sense that I'm like, by the end of the movie, it's like, what a broken team. No, their Avengers are stronger than ever at the end of this movie. Except for the fact that a lot of them will quit. Uh, yeah, well, yeah, that's that's the aspect. I mean, there's, there's very few character deaths in this movie or anything like that. But my worry is, I'm like, I can they change that when Infinity War comes around? Because if you're split into two parts and you end part one with Thanos with the gems, shit needs to have gotten real. He can't just be like, I've gotten the gems, and like all the Avengers are standing around, like, oh man, like it needs to. I, I need to see, and I hate to say it, being the fanboy, but I need to see that Captain America's fucking corpse at his feet when he does it, or oh, something like that. That's like, I need, gonna happen. I just need to see like a big weight that's gonna make me be like, how the fuck are they gonna stop that? Because you know he's gonna kill Vision. Yeah, he has to. He has to get the gem from him or something like that. Like 
We're at, we're now also starting to reach the point where Marvel is getting a cast of heavy hitters in the Avengers. You know, we have yeah. Vision in there. You have Scarlet Witch, who's maybe not as powerful as her comic book counterpart, but, but still she, very. She just have a place to go to. Yeah, you, you can't you start still, with House of M, Scarlet Witch. Yeah, but it's still like a case of like she's a very powerful character. They're gonna presume we had Doctor Strange around that time. Uh, Captain Marvel will probably be appearing. Like you're gonna have huge characters in the MCU at that point. So it's it's you know we would, to start ushering them in. You just start kind of way like, oh, do we need Hawkeye anymore? Do we really need Hawkeye to shoot arrows at Thanos? Yeah. <sighs> do we need Black Widow to fucking get Hulk to, to pop a nut and turn back into Bruce Banner? No, I don't think so. Uh, but, <laughs> quarter lullaby. Yeah, exactly. But that's, that's the big thing, is that there's an obvious build that's happening. And the problem with this movie, and I, we didn't really were able to get into it completely, is when I'm talking about keeping all the balls up in the air, is the fact that this has to keep in the infinity in the air. It also has to start the split between cap and iron man, which it did. And I thought it did a really great job. And the only problem I have with the split happening in this movie is that it didn't really seem to hurt either character that much. No, it, it, by the end of it, if you were to tell me, if I didn't know what the next movie is and you were to tell me civil wars, the next movie, I'd be like, huh, that's weird. Cause cap and, uh, Tony, like, end the movie on ridiculously good terms. Like, they're just like, hey, I'll see you around, buddy. Like, sorry, things got a little tense there. But so. um, I'll tell you what, though. This is something I actually talked with somebody else, and I've been thinking about this since I saw the movie. If they go with the basic plotline of Civil War, Scarlet Witch is going to be the incident. The big incident. That causes the registration to happen. If they go registration. That she's going to go too far and kill too many people. Uh, I mean, I could see them doing it. I kind of hope they don't, though. Like, I don't know. I guess I hope it's more... Like, I could see how our powers uncontrolled, like, you know, untapped could cause a big problem like that. But I don't know. I, I don't want to hate, like, Black or uh, Scarlet Witch. No, because well, you, you can handle it well. You can handle it well. If they handle, if they handle it right, I could see it working. But I, I worry that it's just going to be like, oh, like, oh, great. The other female character is a fucking bitch. You know, like, she's a fucking crazo, like, loon bag. Oh, great, cool. Well, to be fair, she's a ticking time bomb because of what happens in Age of Ultron. She seemed well adjusted to it. <sighs> I don't know why we're dancing around it. Quicksilver dies. Like, he it, dies. You're, he has you're a good death, though. He does, and I, I, I've heard people shit all over Aaron Tyler Johnson. They don't like him. They don't like the accent. I think the accents are maybe a little too cartoonish yes. for it. Yes, but, but otherwise, I, I really liked I, – I thought he was good in the role, and it is very sad. Uh, I think the thing – here's the thing. You know, Everyone's comparing it with uh, Days of Future Past, Quicksilver, and they're different characters because it, it, Quicksilver from Days of Future Past wasn't even a character. It was a spotlight yep. in a movie. He had no real role in that movie beyond, hey, look, I'm going to do this really crazy scene that really doesn't have a power scale to it. And technically, I should have been able to solve the plot all at once if I had just hung around. But in this movie, you have a you have a full character. And the thing that I love about him is they make him a hero. There is a scene in the movie and I mentioned like, oh, we should cut the whole stuff in uh, South Korea because we don't need it. The, one of my favorite and maybe my favorite scene in the whole movie is Cap, uh, Scarlet Witch and... Quicksilver are on a train that has fallen off the tracks and is going out of control. Mm -hmm. And Cap's like, we have to stop this train. So Scarlet Witch focuses her power. She's trying to slow the train down by like, you know, forcing the brakes, like just by stopping the momentum. And while she's doing that, Quicksilver is running out in front of this speeding train, grabbing people and moving them out of the way. And I was like, fuck yeah, these guys are goddamn superheroes. Like that's the coolest thing in the world yeah. to see. That's why, like, when it comes to that action scene, that's why, like, I'm I'm pretty cool with it because it builds up to that. Yeah, like that seems absolutely 100 percent worth it. One of my favorites in the whole uh, whole movie. It really helps their arc because let's be honest: if anyone's going to inspire people to turn good, it's going to be Cap saying, "Like, we need to save people." Well, don't forget, Hawkeye can make you an Avenger. Yes, exactly. He has that, he has that permission. He actually has extra uh, cards in his back pocket, just hand to people. Yeah, he's Avengers. just like, hey, if you step out this door, you're an Avenger, and it's just like Spider-Man, like, what, me? Oh, huh? huh? I can be an Avenger now? We and, and you know what? We didn't really talk about the big glow of the movie, but Hawkeye is, like, the heart of this movie. He is, and it's tough because the way they present him, 
they're teasing the entire movie that he's going to die. Oh, they do. It's, it's like, hey, he has a family. Hey, he has another kid on the way. Hey, he's like, this is the last mission, honey. I promise. I'm hey, gonna, I'm, after this, I'm no longer going to do any more renovations on our house. Yeah, like you're just like, oh, God, you're going to kill the shit out of this guy. And it was you know, it was planned to do that because the, the big thing is, you know, looks like he's going to die. Quicksilver speeds in, saves him at the cost of him dying. He's like, you didn't see that one coming. Um, Cousin, let's go yeah. get some ultra titties. <laughs> yeah, Natasha, let's go find if uh, we can kill Moose and Squirrel. Uh, I'm, I'm going to go with the Grand Theft Auto one instead. <laughs> uh, but no, it, they, you know, they, they kind of give you the bait and switch on that. But if you take that away, it's it's still like, wow, you made Hawkeye maybe the most compelling character in this movie because he gets cool scenes. You know, he doesn't have maybe as many cool like arrow firing scenes just because everyone has less time to show off their stuff. So you really don't get to see it too many of his cool things. But he has this great moment where Scarlet Witch is going around. She's fucking with everybody's heads and getting them in to go in. They're like, oh, my life is so sad moments. And she tries to do it to him, and he just fucking embeds her skull with a fucking lightning arrow. He's like, no, nah, no more mind control for me. <laughs> I've had it once, never again. I, I almost applauded at the scene. He's like, oh, thank God. <laughs> that Hawkeye's like, yeah, you, it's happened to me before. No, I'm good. <laughs> F that. I'm not spending another movie fucking mind controlled. <laughs> that was that was a really good scene. The only other really great quip he had was when he was going when he was pretending that he was going to kill Quicksilver. Oh, and it's so sad now in hindsight, but it was a great lot of time. He's like, I'll just tell him that uh, when I found him, Ultron was saying on him. Oh, poor kid. Didn't see it coming. Oh, oh man. No one would ever know. <laughs> <laughs> he, he is great. Uh, Hawkeye is legitimately a great part in this movie. He plays a big emotional role for uh, Hawk, or, uh, Quicksilver and Scarlet Witch eventually kind of. Uh, and, as, and as his wife even says, he's the heart of the team. He is. You do actually get the sense that the team needs him. Like, you know, the first movie, you're like, oh, whatever. He's just the guy who fires bow and arrow. But in this, you're like, no, with all these big, super-powered guys, with all these huge personalities, Clint actually does have a role of kind of being a, 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 a heart to the team, you know, yeah. to, to being this, this core figure. Yeah, and it, that's one of the things that I loved about actually seeing Clint actually do stuff for once. And I'm like, this is the hot guy I've been waiting for. The hot guy. Finally, hot guy is here. Comic joke. But um, that was that was really nice to finally fucking see him actually not being an asshole. <laughs> I was like, yeah, he's just not making occasional quips and shooting arrows that he's not looking at. Which there's a really great joke in the commentary, and I wish they did in the movie where um, Joss actually says, "I can never get enough of Hawkeye not looking at the arrows he's firing." <laughs> he's just that good. Exactly. He's just like, oh. <laughs> and it's like come on damn it but um no i mean like it was the funny part is is all the characters that weren't in the last movie that much got a lot more screen time which is great that i love that there was more hulk there was more black widow there was more uh, there was more hawkeye there was more characters who were introduced in this movie i was very happy about that and uh, the thing that I didn't like is the fact that they just made Tony Stark never not make jokes the entire movie. Yeah, you don't get – because this is a movie where there is Rhodey, but there's very, like, very, very few times where him and Tony are actually interacting, and there's no pepper. So he really doesn't have, like, a human grounding. I guess the closest you get is when he's talking with Steve, but – And then, okay, how did you – how much did you swoon with that Steve scene? With that um, chopping wood. I, I, that's one scene I had seen ahead of time. That's the one scene they revealed at the El, uh, El Capitan reveal last year. Yeah. But it was pretty awesome to see it again. Just to see him, like, rip that log. Oh, and you're like, oh, oh Captain. <laughs> like, I'm just like, everybody turn away. I need to jack off for a moment here. Shh, everyone be quiet. They're like, but Black Widow's scenes were a couple minutes ago. I know. Shh, I need to look at my Steve. I need to see my America rising. I need to see my waifu. Um, but yeah, it's like that. That's the thing is that Tony, he was just a joke this entire movie. All he did was make jokes, even more so than usual. And Tony needs a little bit of grounding. Like he he was not humbled by Ultron. No, you, you never got the idea that he ever was like, this was a mistake. Because the first opportunity he has to do it again, he takes it immediately without a second thought. And he never like apologizes for it. Yeah. He's never like, 
whoops, sorry guys, I maybe shouldn't have meddled with science. Whoops. And it's just like, no, he just goes, it's like, it wasn't my fault. He immediately says, I didn't do this. And that is something I'm actually not a fan of, is that they did not make it Tony's fault. Yeah, I, I guess that's them saying, like, ah, oh, we don't want to, we don't want to make, you know, Robert Downey Jr. someone that people don't like, because it's, it's just impossible. But it's like, look, when you get to Civil War, you either have to, you have to, coded in some way you have to show there are times where steve rogers is going to be wrong and you have to show there are going to be times where tony stark's going to be wrong because it's it's an issue with layers so this would have been an opportunity for them to kind of go into that because they do show that steve's wrong at points in this they do and And then steve owns up to it yeah steve owns up to like yeah you know this vision guy i guess he is a cool dude you know maybe i shouldn't have been so skeptical of him from the start and i guess that's (laughs) also probably the whole Tony in the first place is someone who doesn't admit his defeat. But the problem is, is that when you don't have him feeling an ounce of remorse over creating a genocidal robot. And we don't have an Iron Man four to fill that role in because maybe you could say it'll be like how, you know, Iron Man three was him dealing with the effects of Avengers. Uh-huh. You know, maybe this will be him having more post traumatic stress because his design did ultimately, like, even though everyone we see get attacked in this movie, they showed the Avengers saving. We still know there were casualties. We still know people died. You know, they yeah. even mentioned at one point that anyone who tried to engage Ultron died. So people have died because of Ultron. <laughs> Speaking of people died, how about that Strucker? <laughs> Good God. Wow. Yeah, they, they're they really just like making it like, all right, we're just cutting every head off of Hydra because fuck it. Let's just get rid of this. OK, I have to say they fridged fucking Strucker. He definitely did not get any real opportunity to be like oh this Strucker dude look at this This is an intense guy this is and he was just weeding too much yeah I, I i did love his line of like you know we will never surrender man all right i'm going out there to surrender like when he's talking like i did like that line and it, it came with a reason to it too of like i'm gonna pretend to surrender and all you know so on and so that, forth but that's, but it was... that's what was actually i was referring to that's a too just weeding of a line for someone like Strucker. yeah and I... and then it's like we see Strucker. Strucker's dead and we're like I actually groaned in the movie theater when Strucker was dead. Because it's like, Strucker's actually a really cool villain. He's a really he good is. cat villain. And we just off-screen killed him. It, it was strange to see Strucker. Like, it, it was like, all right. I mean, I, I assumed he wasn't going to be the main antagonist here. But I was like, maybe they'll save him for Civil War, you know, him and Zemo. Like, you nope. Know, yeah, well, no, we just got rid of him. Yeah, they fridged him. They literally fridged him. Because he had no character whatsoever. Like, he's not in the he show. Must, and he never says, and this is the biggest, maybe the biggest problem with the entire movie, or the biggest crime it committed. He doesn't say Hail Hydra once. There's not a single Hail Hydra in the entire movie. Fucking ridiculous that he doesn't just at one point just be like, I'm going to send it now. Hail Hydra. Like, I just, if they had said it even just once, I'd be like, okay. But the, for them to have Hydra in this movie several times, he doesn't say it once fucking uh, abomination it's heresy yeah and it's just it does bug me it's just like guys come on can you stop killing every villain (laughs) all the interesting ones and the ones see the thing is like if you're killing a villain who's the main villain in the movie that's possible i hate it because it a lot because then you don't have something like loki Mm-hmm. where uh, we don't know what's going to happen in Thor 3 with Loki still being around. One thought I, I heard that was relatively interesting to me, I, I don't think it's going to happen. I think it's coincidence more than anything else. But it's worth noting that some of the biggest villains have been killed by Infinity Gems. Yep. And the, the idea being that maybe they aren't dead, like some aspect of them survives within those gems, and that's something that... Uh, Thanos is able to take advantage when he has the gauntlet because, you know, Red Skull, Ultron, uh, um, Malekith, and Ronan were all killed by Infinity Gems. So, Mm -hmm. potentially, some aspect of them could still be around and utilized, maybe. It's a theory. That would be cool. It would be awesome. Like, get, like, a small Masters of Evil storyline going into... Yeah, who leads the Masters of Evil? Well, Baron Zemo tends to. Is the Strucker usually involved at least a little bit? I'm going off of Earth's Mightiest Heroes where uh, Zemo was involved, and I don't think I've seen an incarnation beyond that, so let me... Let's just say Strucker's involved because we don't have a Zemo. Yes, okay. 
Well, maybe he's also going to... He wasn't killed by an Infinity Gem. Maybe we'll just add that back. His Zemo is just there someplace we haven't seen him yet. He just pops up. Hey, guys, I'm Zemo. I have a sword. <laughs> uh, it looks like Baron Zemo is generally the, the guy who makes him, though. Yeah, that's, that's kind of what I thought, but I'm just like, we have Strucker. Yeah, Strucker works in the same way. It's not like Baron Zemo's got powers and shit. No, they're, they're kind of the same. The only difference is, is that Zemo has a sword and a mask. Yeah, Zemo is a bit more combative, or uh, Strucker is like a scientist kind of guy. Exactly, and we're not really talking too much about spoiler spoilers. It's just more thoughts, because the problem with this movie is a lot of it you kind of see coming from a mile away. Yeah, I mean, even the the twist with, like, oh, Quicksilver dies instead of Hawkeye, it was kind of something a lot of people kind of figured going into this. Like, you know, you guys would have to stun it. Like, we know there's a Cat movie. We know there's a Thor movie. We know that Iron Man's going to be in Captain America. We know that Hawkeye's going to be in Captain America. We know that Black Widow's going to be in Captain America. You're probably not killing the Hulk. You're probably not going to kill both of the twins. And you have a deluge of male characters already. What character, like, in that group do you imagine you're going to get rid of if you're going to? Uh, trick question, it's Vision. Yes, Vision dies. Holy crap. Yeah, I know we said it was Quicksilver, but oh my god. Vision takes those bullets, doesn't use his phasing powers, and he still also uses the line. Bet you didn't see that one coming in the, the ridiculous accent. It was so crazy. It was it was really crazy. No, yeah. it's like, Quicksilver made the most sense. He's also two deus ex machina mm-hmm. when it comes to his powers. He's just like, how do we stop this? I ran fast. Yeah, and they, they, they showed his limits well. They, you know, they actually showed him being exhausted, which... When you look at, like, the one from Days of Future Past, you're like, this guy can do everything. Why don't you just leave every problem up to him? Exactly. That, that was that was actually the problem in that movie is that they had they had their winning ability right there. And it's kind of like, why? They're just like, head back home and watch everything on television. With my baby worry, sister we're... who's wearing red. Yeah, don't worry. We're going to be bringing the beast to this. <laughs> he'll, he'll, he'll help. fulfill your role. He'll punch things and be fast, right? He goes fast, right? <laughs> Yeah, that's his thing. I don't, I don't, I don't know. Yeah, but there's really not much else to talk about that's super spoilery, other than the fact that one of the complaints that I've seen is that they completely damseled Black Widow, which I disagree with. Because they wouldn't have damseled her if it like had a. I, I, I can see why people think that just because the scene has no purpose, and I understand why they did it now. Like, oh yeah, she's pregnant for a yeah. large time of that filming. They couldn't, you know, utilize it during those scenes. But it's just, it had very little purpose. So it could, even in Ultron being like, I'm doing this because I'm lonely, he has one scene where he talks to her, then he throws her in a shack, and she MacGyvers a radio to contact everybody else. She's just like, what What was the point of this? Yeah, and it's just like, she's not completely damned. Like, she's just sit there and wait to be rescued. Yeah, I mean, she, she finds her, you know, starts to get her own way out. Um, eventually we get, you know, some more stuff with her and Hulk their relationship did you like that by the way i thought it was okay i do kind of agree it kind of comes out of nowhere i i get that it does make sense like i i can kind of actually see if you do kind of look into it that she is someone who sees a lot of herself in the hulk as being someone who doesn't deserve to be a hero someone that people think is hood she's like i'm an assassin like i'm not really a hero the same way you guys are i do think they needed to word that one scene they need another pass on that scene uh the one where she reveals uh what happened yep. to her? Yeah, I, I, it was a little bit clumsily handled, but um, it is, and I do think that the backlash from it is semi unfounded because that is not the intent of the scene. It's very obvious that the intent of the scene is that Black Widow is, she's not infertile; she was sterilized. Yeah, which I think is a very important distinction, and that this happened to her. So they say, oh, she says that, and then close after she says she's a monster. That's not the reason. She was sterilized so that she would be a more effective assassin, which makes her a monster. Yeah. She's a monster because she's been raised to kill in, like, a thousand different ways. Exactly. And there's a few other little small scenes in that that I really liked. I like the fact that we get the culmination of the Red Room stuff, which is very good because they talk about that, of course, in Peggy Carter. Peggy Carter. (laughs) Agent Carter. And um, I like that they finally finished off that whole thing. That fucking uh, ballet dancer thing finally makes sense, doesn't it? Yes, thank God. They finally got to the ballet dancers. You're like, yay. 
<laughs> during the when the scene happened in the movie, I was like, if they if this is longer than like two minutes, I'm gonna scream though. It's like ballet dancers, and they're just done. You're like, oh okay, cool. Oh, phew. Okay. Okay, uh, but that that's kind of the end of that scene, and it's like, um, I'm kind of okay with it. I just think they needed. I think it needed another pass. I think it needed another pass, and really, like, it's cool to get it there. I feel though that Black Widow was handled much more intro, like she was much more interesting and then handled dynamically in Winter Soldier. I feel like they yes. nailed making me care about Winter uh, Black Widow there. Whereas here, I'm like, yeah, this makes sense. She she falls in love with Hulk. She has these things. She feels her past. It's just not as well handled. She's not, but I'm. I, what I'm saying is specifically in that scene. Oh yeah, that scene needed a rewrite. It just needed to to fix itself up. They needed it, it one more out. pass. They, there was nobody on the scene going, the entire, like, Tumblr community is going to get this wrong. Yeah. And I'm not trying to dis, like, diminish that. I mean, there's some valid complaints about the way she's handled in that scene. I just think that it's just, it's too easy to misconstrue the intent. Because mm-hmm. the intent is very obviously, that's not what they're saying in that scene. I mean, they're not trying to say that not being able to have kids makes you a monster. It's... I wasn't able to have kids because they wanted me to kill people for a living. Because, a because being able to have kids was the last semblance of humanity that I had, and they took that from me. Yes. Forcefully, without my consent, I'm a monster. Uh-huh. And it's just the fact that since that was the last part of that whole statement is what makes people think that. It's like, I can't have kids, I'm a monster. It's like, no, no there's some stuff before that you're kind of missing. Yeah. And... um. I feel like that's one of those things that once the internet calms down a little bit, it'll be a lot better. But um, I can't wait to see it again. I'm probably going to see it next month when I'm with my girlfriend. I'm very glad about that because we're going to see that in Fury Road together. Mm. It's going to be cool. Congratulations. Yeah. That's going to be an interesting month. But um, when it comes to Age of Ultron, in the end, I'm unsatisfied in the end. Like, I feel like it was junk food versus something like um, the first Avengers, which was like dessert. You know? Yeah, I can kind of see where you're going with that. It was it was definitely more of a blockbuster than what we've come to expect. We've we've started to realize like, hey, these Marvel movies can be more than superhero movies. They can be. Uh, quasi-political thrillers. They can be space these operas. big space operas. They could be these mythological fantasies. Or they could be Avengers and they could just be a superhero movie. Yeah, and that's the problem, is that that's all that this movie was. was... And that's... I mean, look, it's cool to see them all fight. I, I seriously, I, I nerdgasm in the scene where you see them all spinning around in this big action shot of all these guys fighting together in this cool battle scene. It's awesome. It's incredible. It's one of the most amazing things to think that we're actually seeing on screen as a nerd. You know, like, holy crap, they did it. This is so fucking awesome. They fucking did it. Like, that's great. But it's it's also to a point where you're like, there's an inherent problem that these Avengers movies have where all of the strengths, all of the developments, all the great things we've seen these solo movies do, Avengers can't do them. Yeah. So it's like inherently I now have to recognize Avenger movies won't be as good as the best solo movies Marvel can do. Yeah, and I'm that's why I'm kind of hoping the Russos breathe new life into the Avengers movies because there's a lot of pros out there that Joss did not want to make this movie. Yeah, you can kind of feel that. You, you can definitely get some sense that a lot of the passion was not there. No, it wasn't. Um, and I have to say that as a plot, uh, this was not the thing that needed that Joss needed to do. Yeah. This was not the movie that Joss needed to make. And it, may, and it pains me to say that because I'm a huge fan of his work. I've been a fan of his work since I started watching Angel back when that came out. And it just hurts to say that. I, w- I kind of wish Joss had to make this movie. Yeah. Yeah, it's a shame that he just happens to be kind of the best guy for it. Mm-hmm. But yeah. <sighs> well, at least we got uh, Civil War and Guardians 2 to look forward to when it comes to big team-up movies. That is true. I, I think I'm, I'm very excited. We'll see, basically. Civil War is going to be a big showcase to see how the Russo brothers will handle Avengers since it's essentially Avengers 2.0. It is. Or what did, what did or Anthony Mackie say? Like, it's Avengers 8? <laughs> He says it's like Avengers 3.8. I was like, it doesn't make sense. You haven't even done Avengers 3. Why are they like, doing shut 3. up. 8? It's Avengers 3.8. It's like, oh, okay, whatever you say, man. 
Listen here, Mackie. You know what? I would have been. I would have loved to have seen him in the end, in the final battle. Like, it was cool to see War Machine, but I would have loved to see Falcon. It, yeah, it would have been kind of cool to see him there. Uh, we don't get to see him there, but we do get to see he's part of the new Avengers team. Which is? Uh, well, presumably Captain America is still hanging around. Well, he's le- he's training them he, at the end of the movie. Tra- he's training them, and I believe that's also to imply Black Widow staying along as well. But beyond them is Vision, Scarlet Witch, War Machine, and Falcon. Yep, and um, I don't know. I didn't really pay attention to Scarlet Witch's costume. I think I was okay with it. I think it looked cool. I've been trying to see images of it to like reevaluate it because you only get like a hot second to see it. They're like her and uh the Falcon both have new costumes. Falcons isn't much of a change. It's just like, hey, it's more red in it. It's but, closer to his current suit in the comics. Yeah. But hers is like a complete upgrade. Yeah. It went from although I have to say I liked her costume at the end of the movie. Other uh, before she changes into her Avengers costume. I actually liked that costume where it was just a dress. Yeah, I like that. It it fits well with her, but um I can kind of see why they didn't go with it. Um they were like, hey, let's actually give her a superhero outfit. Mm-hmm. I'm like, no, no, the dress was actually really cool. I liked it. Oh, now she's wearing like close to a daredevil costume. Oh. <laughs> but yeah, that's kind of it. I mean, there's not too, too much to talk about this movie. It's not like when Guardians hit or when um, Winter Soldier hit and a lot of new information came out. This is just... By the way, Wakanda exists. By the way, a character never even talked about fucking Colossus in this movie. And gets his hand cut off, which is obviously setting up him getting a fucking vibranium gun for his hand. like he So had. he can show up in uh, Black Panther, because they don't want to start with Man-Ape as a villain. Yeah. That's a rough one to start with. Um, but yeah, so they, they have a few things they are obviously setting up, and Colossus is kind of one of those two that's just kind of there. But he's only there if you know who he is. Yeah. If you don't understand who he is and what they're referencing, you're just like, whatever, some dude. But if you do actually get it, you're like, oh, that's kind of a cool. It's it's cool. But <clears throat> but the whole Wakanda stuff is interesting and whatnot. But in the end, I, I do feel like this movie is just kind of junk food. It's, it's kind of unfulfilling in a lot of ways just because of the fact that it does really suffer from too many balls up in the air. And it really feels like the culmination of what we've been leading up to is going to be Civil War as opposed to this movie, which is disheartening in a lot of ways. Mm-hmm. That's my opinion. No, I completely get it. Uh, some people will, will definitely – some people really gravitate toward this movie. I think the best way to go into it is don't go into it expecting to, to leave maybe with the same feeling you had on the first Avengers. The first Avengers was a spectacle. That can't really be – replicated you know the first avengers isn't even that great of a movie when you look at it because there's really not much to it there is it's just hey they're all on the same screen you can't get that this time through the movie needs to hold itself up a bit more and it does have more of a complete story but it's it's just hard to live up to what you had after avengers and i feel you'll enjoy the movie better if you kind of go in like hey i'm aware these things aren't going to be great. I don't know why you'd be going into it the first time though if you're listening to the spoiler cast maybe i should just stop but uh (laughs) I'm like you. You've listened. You've heard everything now. Uh, but no, if you if you go into it without the high expectation of like, the the trailers made it look amazing and Marvel can't miss and all that. It's gonna be go darker. In, yeah, if you just go into it saying, "Hey, I wonder. I hope this is gonna be good. I hope we get some cool scenes. You know, stuff like that." You'll be pleased. Yeah. So, I think right now the backlash is just a lot of people have really high expectations. And to be honest, they advertised it way too much. Mm-hmm. They went way too far. I I like their advertising team. I think their advertising team is probably some of the best in the business. I think they were too good on this one. They showed us too much, and they captured such a great tone that really wasn't what that movie was about. Yeah. Uh, let's see here. Um, apparently, while we've been talking, we have... Uh, a short list of directors for Spider-Man. Last start was David Goyer. Is he still on that list? Oh, God, Goyer. <sighs> Sorry, I'm vomiting my mouth as you're saying okay. this. Just, Goyer is not a good director. <laughs> or Goddard. Sorry, Goddard. Drew Goddard? Okay, that's what better. Yeah, Drew Goddard. If you're like David S. Goyer, I'm like... Mm-hmm. 
No, sorry, I meant Drew Goddard. Uh, he was the one behind Daredevil's uh, original creation attached to Sinister Six. I heard them attach his name to it at one point. Yeah. Uh, who else am I seeing on this list is um, Jonathan Levine, Ted Melfi, and Jared Hess are the short list. But whatever. Who knows? Don't care. The movie's still a ways out. Mm-hmm. But I just thought that was worth mentioning because it actually just uh, happened. <laughs> like I'm, li- it, it literally started trending on Twitter while we were talking. Hmm. Interesting. I also have heard they're they're starting to narrow their search down for Spider Man, and one of the names being mentioned is uh, Asa Butterfield, the kid from uh, uh, Ender's Game. I just don't care as long as it's an asshole fifteen year old. I'm good with it. I think yeah, I think that's what they're trying to go for, young Spider Man. Yay. Well, that's going to do it for us again, the sequel. Yes. We'll be back in about a month or so for probably like a post-mortem on S.H.I.E.L.D. Post-mortem on S.H.I.E.L.D., prep for Ant-Man. Prep for Ant-Man. So we'll see you guys then. Um, We'd probably do something a little earlier, but I'm just not going to be here. Yeah, shit's going to be gone for a little bit. I think it's a good time to take a break, though. we've, We've talked all we can about Ultron. There's no reason to dig into it every single week. No. Ant-Man's still a mile away. We haven't gotten a whole lot of advertising for it. That's that's a good time. Yeah, and once Ant-Man's getting closer to happening, we're probably going to start seeing some Jessica Jones stuff. Mm-hmm. And then between then and now, we're also going to start seeing the build-up in Age of S.H.I.E.L.D. Season 3 or whatever else is going to be happening. I still need to grab Season 1 on Blu-ray. Yeah, I still need to as well. Yeah, that hasn't happened yet. It's still sitting at $44 on uh, fucking Amazon. I told you they never go on sale. It's ridiculous. Like, it's, it's absurd. Like you, you can't. You kind of half believe me when I said these movies never go on sale, and you're like, "Oh I shit!" Know, I believe you now. Now I'm like, "Yeah, if I might as well, guess I'll have to do it now." Fucking dickheads. Yeah, you have to buy them when they come out, or else you're not getting them. Because they just do not go on sale. That and, or you have to wait until like the next in the series comes out. So like the next time Avengers is going to go on sale on Blu-ray is the release of the movie in theaters, or when Avengers Two hits Blu-ray. That's it. <laughs> Yeah. But that's enough of me bitching about Disney's terrible practicing. I'm going to go sober up and probably watch Big Hero 6. Ooh, that sounds like a plan. Yeah, I haven't watched it since I saw it in theaters, but. Well, you enjoy yourselves, good sir. I will. You enjoy yourself this good night. Thank you. No problem. We'll see you guys next time. Goodbye. I'm Bird. I'm Philly Ultron. <laughs>